Awesome. So I pressed the record button. Welcome everyone. Welcome for the people who showed up on time and welcome for people who are going to watch this later. Um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to kick off the official agenda. Uh, but please, whenever you have feedback, question or comment, or you just don't understand something, just please ask it straight away. I'm happy to answer it. There is no strict uh, rules to this meeting. It's really uh, just for us to connect um, for, for our side to really speak about the features that have been implemented recently and for you to learn what's the focus of the project right now, where are we going, and so on. So today, actually, we are going to talk about some new features uh, that recently made into uh, the release. Then there is going to be a demo, a longer one, uh, it's about the installer, and I'd like to showcase to you how to use it with Docker Desktop. And the goal for that is really just to show how you can install Gimlet, how you can try, try Gimlet out on your laptop. One of my friends uh, just mm, teased me for a long while that he couldn't really install Gimlet, couldn't really test it, so we spent uh, two weeks effort to really make that uh, process um, seamless. And we are still finding issues. Um, another friend of mine just tested the installer and there are still issues, but uh, I think you should go and try it out. And then at the end, uh, we're going to talk about uh, directions Gimlet can take. Um, there are no strong feelings about uh, the different features uh, uh, we want to implement. So if you have feedback or desire this is the perfect time to really express them and, uh, and steer Gimlet in the direction that you would like. Awesome, so new features. Um, I'd like to highlight three things. Um, first one is uh, manifest edits go to a branch first. So if you remember, uh, if you went to the uh, Gimlet uh, dashboard, uh, let me go to, to our staging environment. Uh, whenever you edited uh, an application's configuration in this screen, uh, it straight away wrote the changes onto your head branch, your main or master branches. And uh, that's, well, not very friendly to team environments and pretty much cowboyish. And it didn't really work for people who had branch protection enabled. So what we have implemented is that whenever you make a change, let's say we deploy in five replicas and then uh, we change the ingress name to do not merge me uh, for one, you can see the change set right away on this screen. Uh, there's this nice diff view. And if you save the configuration, it doesn't go on the cluster immediately. First, it goes onto a pull request. Here you can see the pull request link. And if you navigate back uh, to the the repository view, you have this little notifications uh, view where you can see your pull requests. And it has some description. Uh, and then the change set is really what you have seen on, on Gimlet as well. You can ask for reviews and, and so on. So this is again, uh, when you edit uh, application configurations. Uh, we have implemented similar to infrastructure components. Now, if, if you're a developer, you are don't frequently go to the environments tab, but if you are maintaining a cluster environment, if you want to change something like enabling the, the Kiverno uh, component, if you click save components, here again, it goes onto a PR, a pull request first. This way you can review your changes and so on. Awesome. Uh, so this was one of the new features and it recently made into um the release so if you look at releases and you look at dashboard uh, 0, 010 0, then you can see that the deploy uh, the end yeah so GitOps rights go to uh, pull requests first this was released eight days ago so soon you can enjoy it on your gimlet instance as well 
Another one that I, I mentioned before is the local installer got um, many uh, improvements. Uh, previously, you needed to use sudo and you needed to do other tricks to really install Gimlet. And there is a long issue here where all the constraints are listed. And what it resulted is actually a pretty, uh, pretty nice experience, uh, I think. Um, uh, which the documentation also has listed uh, local installation options and other is installation options as well. And the local is installer really got uh, simpler and the guide I think as well uh, is quite helpful. And the website uh, recently got uh, some restructuring. So the documentation page was, uh, was uh, reviewed. Every single item was reviewed, rewritten, and adjusted to, uh, to the actual uh, behavior of Gimlet. Some pages were quite outdated. So these were the new features. And if you don't have any questions to those, uh, I will go into uh, the demo. Um, and I'm going to use Docker Desktop for that, uh, simply because I know that many Mac users have Docker Desktop. And if you have Docker Desktop running, I believe you have Kubernetes running as well um, locally, or you can actually enable it somewhere in Kubernetes uh, settings. Now, I am not a, uh, not, not a big Docker Desktop user, so if it's if, it, if, it's, if I say something stupid, please correct me. Uh, but I wanted to do this demo on Docker desktop. So uh, you can see that, yes, you can run Gimlet on your uh, laptop. Yes, you can show your friends how cool uh, you are if you are running it on your local Kubernetes. So I have this Kubernetes running. And I believe it's running. It's called Docker desktop. This is my context selected. And by default, there is not much on, on this Docker desktop cluster, not even an ingress controller. So that is quite uh, good actually for us. All right, and I recommend if you do the installation process that you go on the documentation and you follow uh, basically section by section or paragraph by paragraph. And if you are unsure, uh, these uh, help texts or this guide should really help through the process. All right. so. The installer starts with uh, a one-liner command. You are curling a script off of GitHub and you are piping it into bash. You give some parameter, which is by the way, the domain name, it will be, the Gimlet will be available. Um, and I think here I wrote that at the end of this demo, you will have the dashboard running and with a kubectl port forward, you can access your local installation. So let's do this. Uh, it pulls down the installer. And because it's running on, on a dot trial domain, gimlet.trial will be the URL. And there is a host file entry that you should make on your uh, terminal. Now, I made this already. So I just press uh, yes to this question. And I proceed to the installer, which is available in port 9000. It's a three-step process. Uh, Gimlet uh, bases all Git access on a GitHub application. So we first have to create it. Uh, then we have to create a GitOps environment with the installer, uh, which is funny enough, Gimlet will be part of this GitOps uh, environment. So Gimlet itself is part of GitOps. It's not a GAT process managing everything. It's just another deployment as, as anything else. And then once you created the Git, GitOps repository, uh, you have to bootstrap the automation, which is a, which is a one-time command. So I start with creating a GitHub app, uh, which sends me to GitHub. Uh, please don't hack my GitHub while I'm typing this number. So send one more. Yes, um, we have to name this application. Gimlet dashboard is a great prefix. And I'm going to name it meetup test 200. And the application is created. And now I need to install this application to my own account. And I grant all repositories access 
you can grant just one or two if you really want to. I grant all. And at the end of the day, you should know that you are not granting access to, to me in any, any way or, or to, to anybody. Really, this application lives in your organization. So it's, it's not even a public application. Um, then I authorize uh, this uh, app. This is step two, where I prepare the GitOps environment. I called this uh, meetup test 200. Um, there are some GitOps repo structure information here. I leave everything as default. So basically there will be an infrastructure repo and an application repo for my manifests. And down here, there are uh, a subset of components Gimlet um, supports. Uh, basically, uh, I cheat and go back to this, um, this documentation. And here, there is a section about Docker desktop and I should leave everything at default, it says. So I'm going to continue with the installer here. Uh, just you should know that uh, Minikube is tested, Kind is tested, K3S, K3D uh, was tested, and Rancher desktop. So basically, I think that covers any Kubernetes cluster that typically people run locally. All right, I prepared the GitOps repository with this button, which takes I don't know, like half a minute uh, because of the many files and uh, many uh, API calls. And soon I land on step three. Yes, so step three is here and the installer tells me that my GitOps repos are there. That's cool, I have two. Um, just clicking them it really shows that something was created here 14 seconds ago in front apps. Same with, uh, with apps. And now I have to kick off, kick off the GitOps loop. Now, for people who are familiar with Flux, Flux is the GitOps controller that we need to install the cluster, install on the cluster, and then we have to apply some configuration. So Flux knows that it should pull down the infra and the apps repos content onto the cluster. So all I have to do is really just go step by step and uh, run these comments on my uh, terminal. I clone down the infra repo, then I add a deploy key for the infra repo for Flux. Flux needs a read on the access only. So I add the key and go back. I apply all the MLs out there, which uh, initiate Flux and the GitOps loop. Then I do the same basically for the application repo. Add the deploy key. Again, this is for Flux and it's a read-only deploy key. And apply some more GitOps configuration and add yet another deploy key for Gimletd this time for the apps repo. So Gimletd is the one writing the apps repo. So I add write access there too. And at this point, I should be happy using GitOps and I can close this browser tab. And the installer actually uh, does something handy here. It uh, loops until all GitOps sources has been synchronized to the cluster. And once the loop is healthy, it will also wait for Gimlet to start up. This will take another, I don't know, minute perhaps. Oh, there's a new member just joined. So hello, Jennifer, thanks for joining. And at this point, Gimlet was installed and it's up and running. So what to do next? Basically just go back to the documentation and there is the accessing Gimlet part, which is just a port forward command. And if I run this and go back to 
gimlet.trial port 9000, I have a locally running gimlet dashboard. So this is yay time. So this is the very first time uh, this environment started up. And after a refresh, all the GitOps repos are visible and so on. So that was quick. We are 21 minutes into the meetup and uh, uh, Gimlet is up and running. And we have an environment, meetup test 200, with an agent running with an ingress controller and, and so on. And Gimlet is there. Awesome. So more and more people showing up. Uh, so because we were very fast with installing Gimlet, I think we could go one step forward just to see how to take a test application and uh, go back, test step, and how to deploy this test application onto the Meetup Test 200 environment. Sounds like a, a TV shop commercial, Meetup Test 200. Yay, um, so why don't we do that? Uh, deploy this last CPH test step to this environment. Um, first, we use the dashboard to create a configuration for this app. Uh, this is the first time we are de deploying, so we have to provide a uh, namespace, an image, um, you know, with Gimlet and one chart, uh, the defaults are quite useful. So I just leave the Nginx image there and do we need an ingress? Uh, probably not for this demo. And if you remember, uh, this is a new feature of Gimlet. If you save a, uh, a configuration, it creates a pull request. So this pull request is actually uh, a new Gimlet file in your repository dot gimlet slash meetup test 2000, uh, 200. Uh, there's one step uh, which Gimlet users uh, know very well, I think that's the CI shipper. So the way Gimlet integrates with CI. And if you look into this repo, this, it already has uh, GitHub Actions CI process. And at the end, there is a ship artifact step, which basically tells Gimlet that, hey, there is something that Gimlet can deploy if, uh, if uh, it wants to. And uh, this is actually a bit difficult to make work uh, on a local installation because your local installation is not running on a publicly available uh, address. So a GitHub action which runs on GitHub servers cannot really reach it. So what to do? Um, in the installer section, just for the evaluation purposes, um, I recommend that you expose uh, your local Gimlet through ngrok. Ngrok is a little HTTP tunnel. So this way you can still run Gimlet on your laptop and you can still integrate it with CI. So if you have any questions, by the way, about uh, the things I'm, I'm, I'm saying, please stop me at any point because uh, we have room for questions. We have plenty of time. So this is uh, the ngrok channel. It runs on this address. So this is a publicly available address on ngrok's servers. So whenever it is hit uh, by a web uh, API call, it is being forwarded to my local host. So I sort of expose my local server to the world. So for the CI integration to work, uh, you may recall that there is there are two secrets, uh, Gimlet server and Gimlet token. And if we upgrade the Gimlet server to this one and generate a Gimlet token on the profile screen, then uh, GitHub Actions will be able to call my local server through the CI integration. Right? And if I save now, if, if I merge now this PR, CI process will be kicked off. And Gimlet will know about the change. So let me just see.
All right, the artifact uh, was shipped. And I think if I refresh this, this screen, now you have the deploy button. And if I push the button and deploy test app to meetup test 200, then soon enough, uh, you will see uh, the application being deployed on the environment. A GitOps commit was made. So if I click this, it shows me what was written into the GitOps uh, repository, to the apps one. And in 30 seconds, you will see how, how Flux will uh, pick up this change, apply it on the cluster. And uh, since we have the agent working also on your local um, Kubernetes setup, we will see the deployment popping up here. And I guess that will conclude our demo. Ooh, this is an interesting development. Seems like uh, we are deploying a pod disruption budget and we are deploying it with the wrong API version. Now this can only happen because uh, I updated my Docker um, desktop before the demo and I switched from Kubernetes 1.24 to 1.25, and I believe this was deprecated in that uh, version. So I could fix this manually because uh, if you recall in the app, apps repo, um, in the test app, this manifest was written. I could fix this manually on this API version. Uh, I should definitely fix um, in, the, in, in one chart that uh, we should not use this API version anymore. But instead of that, I'm wondering if I change the replica count from two to one, does that mean that there will be no pod disruption budgets? Uh, possibly, so I'm making this test and I'm of course making a note to, to fix this in one chart because Kubernetes 125 will not support one chart as is. Um, it's also, also worth mentioning that uh, cloud providers, I doubt that they support 1.25 Kubernetes just yet. Maybe they are on 1.24. Most of my clusters are on 1.23, by the way. So that's uh, that is sort of the reason for this change. Uh, this this bug to show up. All right, waiting for the GitHub action. All right. And there is this new version, um, which I'm going to deploy now to meet up test 200. And hoping that this change will not have a pod disruption budget included. Yes, PDB was deleted. So I could bypass uh, this issue for the demo. Awesome. So this time Flux was able to deploy on the cluster and the uh, pod is in the running state. So uh, this concludes the demo. And uh, on our laptop, laptops, we could do uh, this installation and the first deploy in like 20 minutes. Of course, for you, it's going to be longer, but uh, you can see how the workflow is. All right. I think it's time to proceed to the next item. And if you have any questions, by the way, please feel free to speak up. All right, roadmap. This is probably the most exciting part. So uh, there is a public GitHub project uh, where we track issues now. 
Um, we still have an internal uh, issue tracker, which we try to use less and less. I think uh, there are teammates who don't use that anymore. Um, and the most exciting column here is the shipped enjoy part. This is where you can see uh, things that have been released on a, under a version tag, not a release candidate, because that's the release candidate column. And uh, as you can see, the things we have discussed before, the uh, manifest edits that go to a PR, the local installation, and so on, uh, are also visible here. We have upgraded Flux and upgraded the stack and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can track here uh, the progress. We are writing code as well. Um, right now, there are two things uh, going on. Uh, one is... Uh, uh, performance improvements for larger uh, installations whose GitOps repos contain 5,000, 10,000, 40,000 commits because uh, gathering deploy history for uh, a repo that large, um, we can make optimizations uh, to less commit to, to traverse in, in the history uh, endpoint. And I think we are making good progress here. Um, and we are also uh, working on some other stuff, which I'm going to mention soon again. There is the ready for development uh, column, which is also interesting if you want to help out and contribute. Some of them are actually uh, tagged with good first issue and even with the Hacktoberfest label, meaning that we are accepting contributions and even welcome them very much that, hey, if you know Golang, if you want to implement a persistent persistent queue, uh, this is the place where you can showcase your Go skills because uh, these issues are usually self-contained and require only one skill set, be that React or Go. And usually the specification is quite um, clear for us at least. And if it's not clear for you, you can jump on our Discord and uh, we are happy to clarify it even further or just comment on the issue that you, you want to work on this. There are things that we are investigating, um, some trivial things and some less trivial things as well. So this is sort of our Kanban board. Um, I think one other place where you can better see our roadmap is the milestones. Uh, again, this is also on GitHub. So if you go to Gimlet issues, uh, you can find the milestones in the top right corner. And these are like epics or large, like umbrella stories that hold together different issues. And uh, some of them has uh, quite a elaborate uh, description, um, but you can see the larger um, topics that we want to cover. For example, operations context is, uh, is pretty high on our radar. Uh, we know that uh, Gimlet users, developers, um, they can make their configurations and deployment configs in Gimlet, but Gimlet has uh, the opportunity to do even more for developers. Basically, uh, finding the irregular states in Kubernetes, if you have a crash looping pod or a configuration error, and we also know the repositories and with some more uh, meta uh, labels, we could also know who is the owner of this service, uh, which uh, Slack uh, room they are hanging out uh, in. So basically we have the, 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 the context to know if something is wrong and we know where to reach people and we could um, notify them through through Slack notifications and even on the on the, on the dashboard as well. So operations context is uh, is um, coming, uh, I think, uh, as the next big development item for you. So so you could uh, react on issues sooner in your cluster in your, with your deployments. Um, there are some other. Uh, interesting things. Uh, GitLab has been requested many, many times, and uh, we've been quite fixated on GitHub so far. But I think we cannot put this uh, away, like or like dodge this <laughs> for too too long, too, for too much more time. So uh, supporting other 
source code management platforms is coming soon as well. And you can see uh, some other things as well. And if something hits close to you or if it's close to your heart, please speak up and reach out. For example, GitOps proficiency, I think this is something we should should be doing is as being a GitOps development platform, we should be very um, up there with the latest best practices and uh, with signed commits, other secret solutions and uh, as bombs. Uh, we could really up our game in terms of uh, software supply chain security. So this is definitely an interest point of, for us. And if it's interesting for you as well, please speak to us. And of course, um, there are some other things as well. Uh, promotion workflows with uh, with blue green de deployments and canard deployments and post deployment actions, webhooks going back and forth. We could move the workflowing uh, features in Gimlet into a totally different uh, maturity level. Like think about like how Spinnaker does things. And I think one other thing that we are working on right now is uh, it's called the Dumb CI Releaser. It's basically, um, Gimlet is kind of try to change the paradigm that with the shipper, if you remember, uh, CI is losing uh, the control and sort of delegating to, to, to Gimlet because Gimlet is the deployment uh, manager. And uh, some people want to use Gimlet in a way that uh, uh, CI keeps control basically. So CI has nice workflowing uh, solutions already, manual deploy buttons. Um, and there is this very useful mental model in CI that if CI is green, then the deployment is done. So GitOps sort of broke that paradigm. And uh, with this, we are trying to stitch things back together. So basically when the shipper um, shipped the artifact, it will have the possibility to wait until Gimlet did its job. So basically CI becomes again, a good place to go to see, yes, CI is green. It means even Gimlet, even GitOps, even Flux, even the whole shebang uh, returns successfully and CI knows about this. So actually we are working on this uh, quite actively. It is soon going to be a release candidate uh, with a new, uh, wait option in the uh, uh, CI shipper. All right, uh, again, if something um, looks great to you, please talk to us. If you are missing something, please let us know. Um, this is one of the goals of this uh, meetup is to talk about plans and uh, bring closer to, to your needs. Two places to look these things up. One is the public roadmap and the other one is the milestones view. Again, you can find the roadmap if you go to uh, just slash Gimlet.io on GitHub, go to projects and you can see roadmap. And if you want to see the milestones, which are sort of feature epics, you go into Gimlet, you go into issues and you can find the milestones up here. Awesome. And I think to just round up uh, this uh, little event and you can go on to have lunch or you, you drink your coffee. Um, where can you meet us uh, if you want to talk to us? Of course, our Discord channel and, and so on. And there's going to be another online meetup in late October, hopefully with updates of the dumb CI releaser <laughs> milestone, which we will find a better name for. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a nice marketing angle here. Um, and if you want to meet us next week, we are going to be in Scotland, in Edinburgh, uh, where we are go going to talk about dashboards and why dashboards are really helpful and productive for developers. And if, even if you do GitOps, uh, using the dashboard is not uh, a thing from the evil. Um, so that's uh, going to take place next week, next Tuesday, I think. Uh, and on the 9th of November, uh, we are going to Olborg to the cloud native Allborg meetup. Uh, again, ClickOps over GitOps or something else. We will uh, um, discuss this uh, along the line. And again, online meetup in October. And I guess that was it. If you join this meeting and you, if you like what we are doing, if you give us a star on GitHub, many of you already have, but if you haven't, please uh, 
push that star button because that opens doors for us, be that investors or just general developer um, confidence when they uh, try out GimNet. So that was it. If you have questions, now is the time to speak up. Otherwise, I will let you go and continue your day. And uh, thank you for your attention. Awesome. I pushed the stop recording button and I say farewell to all of you. Goodbye, guys. Thanks, Lazo. Bye. Thank you, Serban. Thanks. Bye.